What's up everybody, this is Brian with BPS Customs and today we're going to be taking a look at this bad boy. This is MSI's new X99A Gaming Pro Carbon Motherboard. The X99A Gaming Pro Carbon Motherboard by MSI is the little brother to their much heralded and very expensive godlike gaming carbon motherboard. They're both part of MSI's second generation of X99 boards supporting Intel's new Broadwell E series of processors, the 6950X, the 6900K, the 6850K, and the 6800. Although a lot of current X99 boards will support Broadwell E after a BIOS update, such as the Asus X99 Sabertooth that I have in deep red right over here, these second generation boards support it right out of the box. Not only that, but they do provide a lot more standard functionality than was available in 2014 when the original series of X99 boards came out. Now the first generation of X99 boards didn't offer things like USB Type-C, M.2 compatibility, and what apparently is the biggest and hottest trend in hardware these days, RGB lighting. The X99A actually offers all of that. In addition, MSI has put what they call steel armor onto this board to support specific expansion slots. There's steel armor on the memory dims, there's steel armor on the PCIe slots, and there's even steel armor on the M.2 slot, although I'm not really sure what that's needed for. The M.2 slot does support NVMe devices with transfer speeds up to 32 gigabits per second. Although there are actually four PCIe slots on this board, it only supports up to three-way SLI. Fourth slot is reserved for devices running at X4 speeds. Still, I don't know many people with a four-way SLI setup, I'm pretty sure the three-way is plenty, and especially considering now that there has been a lot of controversy over what exactly three-way and four-way SLI support is gonna mean for the new 10 series graphics cards from NVIDIA. The rear I.O. on this board consists of a legacy PS2 port, four USB 2.0 ports, a clear CMOS button, a gigabit LAN port, four USB 3.1 Gen 1, one USB 3.1 Gen 2, one USB 3.1 Type-C, and the audio I.O. Now the audio on this board is what MSI calls Audio Boost 3. Now in my testing, I didn't notice any difference under normal listening circumstances between this board and my X99 Sabertooth and my Gigabyte Z170 gaming boards. MSI has equipped this board with their Mystic Light extension. This is very similar to the implementation of this technology used by companies like Asus. There's an RGB header on the motherboard itself that you can connect up to separately sold RGB strips. This lets you connect your RGB effects on your motherboard with the RGB effects that you have going on with your case lighting. It's all controlled through the MSI software. The lighting does extend to the board itself. There are four separate Mystic lighting zones. You have a zone above the I.O., you have a zone inside the VRM heatsink, you have a zone on the chipset itself, and there's a zone where the audio capacitors are. The implementation of this kind of RGB lighting solution is getting to be something that more and more companies are adopting. If you have something like an NZXT Hue Plus, this might not actually be a feature that sells you on this board. However, if you're just getting started building a system and you don't yet have a lighting solution but want one, this is actually great. You won't need to purchase a separate lighting controller and MSI actually includes in the box two extensions that'll help you plug in RGB lighting strips. They don't include the strips themselves, but at least it's a start. Other than that, this board is pretty standard X99 fare. It has both SATA and SATA Express ports, although I'm not really sure who's using SATA Express. It actually has overclocking hardware built directly onto the board, which I am not really a fan of. There's actually a dial with a big red button on it that you could crank up to 11 if you want to overclock your board. This is cheesy. This is a $340 enthusiast grade product. We do not need something like this on here. It's assumed that the people who are purchasing this product know how to overclock their board in the BIOS. A physical dial on the motherboard that goes up to 11? Come on, MSI. One thing that I do like about the board is that there is an internal USB 3.1 Type-C header. This will allow for connectivity up through the front panel and could potentially afford an additional way to plug in things like VR headsets in the future. I also applaud MSI for including an LCD postcode readout. I find that some manufacturers are going away from this, and in fact, it's actually something that I missed when I switched over to the X99 Sabertooth. I didn't have a lot of issues with that board, but there were some times when the system wouldn't post, and I didn't know why. 
so I kind of had to go and figure that out on my own. Having the postcode readout is actually something that makes diagnosing problems a lot easier. The aesthetic accents on this board are all carbon fiber, and the board is mainly black. I give MSI major props for this. I really think that this is the way that more manufacturers should go. Having a board that has all the functionality that you want, but doesn't match your color scheme is actually a really big deal when you're dealing with motherboards this high end. Most system builders like to maintain a consistent aesthetic. Having an all black board with some minor gray accents and an RGB component that lets you match your colors to any system configuration you want is actually a huge bonus and will actually attract buyers to this board specifically. It's one of the reasons I've never actually owned an ASRock motherboard. I've heard nothing but good things about how they work, how they perform but I haven't been able to find one that doesn't have crazy blue or yellow or gaudy red accents all over it. They seem to take pride in being able to put as much bold color on their products as they can, and that's not for everybody. It's a strategy that actually can really limit your audience when you think about it. If you have an all black motherboard and a black PCB with some light gray accents and RGB lighting, who isn't your target audience at that point? Okay, what I'm gonna do now is show you some footage of the board mounted on my test bench with my 5820K that just came out of deep red. We're gonna mount the cooler on there, we're gonna install Windows, and then we're gonna take a look at all this RGB functionality. Then I'm gonna to try to do some overclocking, see how this motherboard responds, and compare it to the X99 Sabertooth where I was actually able to get the 5820K up to 4.6 gigahertz. It's a tough bar to clear, especially because in the X99 Sabertooth board, I had a custom loop. So we'll see how we could do with this board, what kind of overclocks we could get, and we'll be right back. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at the MSI Gaming app. This is how you adjust all the LEDs on the motherboard. Uh, it's pretty simple layout, and it's a very small interface, and in order to adjust the LEDs, you go to LED, which seems pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is how it comes default. Um, you're gonna be adjusting all the LEDs at once instead of each individual zone. Uh, you have the LED effects on with no animation, and it is not set to music. So this is pretty similar to the way most other LED implementation is. You can you have a whole bunch of different styles. You can choose from breathing, or flashing, or any of these other settings. Meteor is interesting. Lightning is interesting. Rainbow is pretty cool. Okay, and if you want to change the color, what you do is obviously you select whatever pattern you'd like. Uh, let's try breathing, and we're gonna we're gonna make this a green breathing, and then you just make it green, and all the all the lights change to green. Uh, one a, a feature that I actually like is the CPU temperature, um, because it'll show you based on uh, how hot your CPU is running, um, you know different colors, green to red, and I think that's pretty neat. Uh, it's a way for you to quickly monitor your temperature at a glance, I guess, if you just want to look inside of your case. Uh, but this is all pretty standard, you know, there's a, uh, if, like I said, if you want to adjust each zone, it tells you what zone, what the zone is, or right here you see MB logo, which is the chipset, uh, you have the MB MOSFETs, which is uh, on the, um, I guess this is all one zone, you have the um, uh, VRMs and above the IO, you have the audio, and you have the PCIe uh, LEDs. But that's about it. There's nothing really earth shattering about the software, but it does work. And uh, it has, you know, a couple of different custom options. The rainbow one's pretty cool, the lightning one's pretty cool, but uh, I don't know that I'll be using really any of these, to be honest with you. All right, everybody, welcome to the BIOS of the MSI X99A Gaming Pro Carbon Motherboard. So this is pretty standard MSI BIOS, uh, with the exception of this little number up here, this Game Boost little knob and this is the same thing as we were discussing uh, previously where there's a hardware knob uh, on the board itself that adjusts overclocks. We're going to stay away from this I'm going to show you why. Uh, you can actually uh, get in here and take a look at what overclocking settings this uh, knob is going to go for. The problem is that it doesn't tell you voltages. Now these are all really nice numbers and good targets to hit but you really want to be running your four, your chip at 4.9 gigahertz with no known voltage. This could be running it at 1.5 volts, 1.6 volts. Who knows? I don't want I don't want to risk it, so I'm not going to try that. You have your XMP profile button here. Uh, by default, Broadwell E supports 2400 speed memory, 
uh, I have 2400 speed memory installed and as a result I'm not going to turn this on. Uh, if you are running memory that is faster than that, you will need to enable XMP. So we're going to go through briefly the settings menus. Uh, we're going to leave this overclocking settings for last. Uh, this is your motherboard settings, your system status, your advanced, uh, things like that. Uh, we're not going to dive too deeply into this. Uh, this BIOS is, is pretty complicated and it would take quite a long time to explore. So I'm just going to show you what's at the top level of each menu. Uh, like I said, we're going to skip OC for now. Your M flash is where you'd be able to uh, flash a BIOS. And MSI makes it pretty easy to do so. Your overclocking profile tab is where you can save your previously applied overclocks and apply them with one click. Uh, so you could kind of go through here and try out different configurations. And if one's stable, you save it and you move on to the next one and see if the next one is stable and, and so on. The hardware monitor shows your fan profile, all your fan speeds, your temperatures, things of that nature. It's pretty handy when you're trying to determine uh, if you are running hot uh, and whatnot. Uh, right now you can see we're at, uh, we're at 35C. Uh, the Board Explorer is a nifty, I guess, little thing that MSI is doing, but I don't really see the point. Uh, it just kind of shows you what's plugged into your motherboard. If you built your computer, you should know what's plugged into your motherboard. And then we're going to get over to the overclocking settings. Now, uh, MSI has uh, a way to change this from simple to advanced, and I have it on advanced already. Simple gives you uh, less options, less things you can change. This is how you're going to adjust your multiplier. You notice that uh, you can change it either by all core or per core. I, I leave it on all core. I don't want to mess with my per core multiplier. But basically, there's there's no way to like double click on this. It's not like you can double click and have options. You actually have to manually enter what you want. So right now, we're going to go for an overclock of let's say four gigahertz. So the multiplier is going to be 40. Uh, brings this up to 4. Uh, 4000 megahertz. 4,000 megahertz, I should say. I don't know why I said 000. Um, but there's a lot of other options in here that you can change. Like I said, I can't go through all this right now. The video would be way too long. This is how you adjust your base clock. If you want to change, if you want to do some overclocking with your base clock, this is how you do that right here. Again, it's a manual entry. If you want it to be 125, you enter 125, enter, and it changes the base clock. Be very careful when messing with the base clock because in, con in conjunction with your multiplier, you can end up with a frequency that's way too high. So when you're overclocking, you're going to need to adjust your voltages, and that is down here. Now you can see that um, I've actually already messed with this core voltage. It's a, I had it at 1.3 and I changed it back to auto. Uh, we're going to change this back to 1.3 uh, because I found that a 4 gigahertz overclock at 1.3 is actually stable. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, as you can see, a lot more voltage settings are down here, which we're not going to mess with. And so then we're going to go back to save and exit. Yes, we're going to save our configuration and we're going to reboot. All right, we're all rebooted. It looks like everything booted up fine and stable. No problem right as of now. Oh, go away, Cam. We don't want to. All right. So what we're going to do is in order to make sure this is a stable overclock, I'm not going to run IDA64 for any length of time. That would just take way too long. The purpose of this video was just kind of demonstrate how to do an overclock, but I will run Cinebench, let's say. Uh, only takes a minute and uh, we can see uh, we can see how the system, system is performing. This is uh, a benchmark I ran last night uh, with no overclock. I got 1543. Uh, again, we're, we didn't go for a super high overclock here. And uh, just just to mention, you, you I don't know if you guys noticed, but I have the, the 6900K in here. I do not have the 5820K. And the reason for that is I realized that I needed to uh, edit a lot of videos. Right now, I have a lot of stuff coming in. So I, I, I left the 5820K in deep red for now. And um, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna leave it that way until I'm able to swap out everything. The, uh, the 6900K is gonna go into this MSI motherboard anyway, so I'm just gonna leave it in there for now, and it's gonna sit in my test bench until I'm ready to swap everything over. But let's let's run the CPU benchmark and see if everything is stable, at least moderately stable. All right, and there you have it, 1647. Nice little bump, uh, about 100 points from the stock settings. Uh, I really think that this, uh, I'm probably gonna be able to get this chip up way past where it is right now, especially when I put it on a custom loop, because right now uh, it's just on a Corsair H80i, which just has a 120 millimeter fan for heat dissipation. So I have high hopes for the 6900K once I get it into my main system. But uh, that's it. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna close this out. 
Mm, sure, we'll save our benchmark score. Yes. So, uh, you know, get subscribed to this channel. We have a lot more exciting content coming up with this next-gen hardware. Find me on Twitter at VPS underscore customs. Leave a comment on this video or, uh, or toss it a like if you, if you can. Uh, you know, everything like that helps me, and uh, I always like to hear feedback from anybody on, uh, on what I screwed up or what I did really well or, or anything in between. So, once again, I am Brian with BPS Customs. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.